Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a quick hot take on Joe Biden's speech. Now, let me tell you something. I tried to, first I tried to do a live stream, uh, an impromptu live stream, but I effed it up and I put it on private and I ended up saying a bunch of stuff that I'm sure would have gotten me flagged on YouTube. And I was half expecting to like see the stream go down midway because I had said things that I then, ooh, I regret it. Plus then I got a call in the middle of it, which I had to take. So I just deleted the whole thing because I, I, it just wasn't even worth putting up. It's just me being snarky and watching Biden. But, um, yeah, I mean, this was one of the worst, worst speeches I've ever seen for, from a president. Because all it was was declaring that anybody who supports Donald Trump is a bigot, uh, doesn't, you know, is, is destroying democracy and has to be countered. This was a political speech. And look at the, the optics of this. And now, Razor Fist was on Twitter saying that his staff is sabotaging him, and this is the only explanation for this. Because look at this. Look at this. This looks like, it looks like America, an American president in hell. I mean, why would you use these red, red lights? Why? These blood red lights to light up the background using Marines as props. And, you know, it was interesting because the speech is all about how great America is and the Constitution is. And I just thought, that's not what most of your side believes anymore. They're all for throwing out the Constitution, for tearing it to pieces. They think everybody's a bigot who founded this country, but he kept alluding to that as if, I don't know, his constituents are all on board with that. They're just not anymore. I would say a good 25% of them would love to see all that thrown into the trash and, you know, socialism be the new norm. Uh, they would love it. Uh, this guy, man, he can't read a room. And over and over again, he said, this is what democracy is. He kept redefining democracy again and again and again. And every redefining was just, you know, at one point he just goes, uh, you know, basically implies everybody on the MAGA side is a bunch of, uh, you know, bigots. I guess I could say bigots on YouTube without getting flagged, but he said a lot worse. He said a lot worse. And the implications are, you know, fortunately, I think this is just a lot of hyperbolic bluster. But man, he's, I think he's damaged the office of the presidency with this speech. I think it was that bad. This is a guy who's delusional in thinking that he's actually done some good. Uh, if he believes any of the words coming out of his mouth over and over again, he said, he had one line like, you know, we live in the, the light of truth and MAGA lives in the shadow of lies. <laughs> like, is he, is he a president or is he your pastor? Is he, I mean, it's really turning it into a religion to be so faithful to the Democrat belief system at this point. You really do have to have faith because you can't use logic. You know, this is a guy whose policies are absolutely devastating the economy. They're, they're destroying the country. They're tearing it to pieces after Trump got some things running pretty well. And you have to give it to him. You have to give Trump that. You have to give Trump, even the most ardent critics of Trump admitted during his administration, the economy was doing great. It was doing fantastic. And a lot of it was his policies. And you cannot... Uh, uh, say that Biden's economic policies are good. They're terrible. And he's delusional. Absolutely delusional. He's talking about, you know, all his past infrastructure plans. You know, uh, oh, we're going to have a green economy and new roads. Who the hell's going to be able to drive on them, Joe? You want everybody to buy an electric vehicle. California doesn't want you to charge them right now because they're having problems with their grid. Uh, Colorado is controlling the thermostats of people because they're having a heat wave. Who the hell could buy and afford an electric car in this economy anyway? So I, have, I, I somehow get an electric car and now I can't charge it? What good is that? <laughs> 
And by the way, I don't know how long an electric car even lasts. There's a real problem with electric cars not being very green because, you know, when they're time to go, they have all these minerals in them that they're pretty toxic. And they just end up in these, not landfills, but these junkyards that are way more toxic than a regular patrol, uh, petrol car. Petrol, I'm, I've watched too much of the Lotus Eaters. Um, so, and again, he's slurring his words. I mean, he got through the speech. I give it to him. He didn't really hesitate. A couple of times he went, uh, blah, 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 blah. but, you know, he's talking about truth and honesty and how, how, you know, it's a moral thing. And it's like, dude, your son banged his brother's widow, shacked up with her, cheated on her, smoking crack, banging hookers, and then collected bribes from China and I think the Ukraine uh, and possibly the Moscow mayor. I mean, Jesus, man, you can't even address that with a straight face. You really can't. This guy's one of the most dishonest presidents in history. Now, you can say Trump is exactly honest, but my God, dude, my God. Again, it all comes back to accuse your opponents of that of which you are guilty. Now, he didn't use the word fascism tonight, uh, but I'll remind you, it just came out, I think today or late yesterday, that the Biden administration has been working with Google, Facebook, and Twitter to suppress certain uh, information, uh, medical information, I'll say, about a certain medical condition that now has come to light, and the people who were suppressed were correct about that certain medical condition and the things you should do for it. So that's a very different definition of fascism when you have the government working with corporations for political gains and profit. And I think it goes deeper than that. I think the pharmaceutical companies are in that mix, but the proof hasn't come out yet about that. Um, so accuse your enemy of that of which you are guilty, which I think is what this is. And this is all about the midterms. Now the Republicans are up in the generic ballot, six points last time I checked, six points. They've never been up in the generic ballot. Most people, and I was one of them, they hated Republicans, right? Back in the eighties, I was like, oh, Ronald Reagan, yeah, he's terrible. Um, I still don't like Reagan really, but uh, I, I remember mostly second term Reagan. Uh, anyhow, You've got such a division in this country, and this guy is making it worse. Basically saying everybody who's a MAGA Republican, that, that's that's outside the norm. That's outside the box. Oh, certain Republicans are okay. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, the ones that agree with you. <laughs> you know, Liz Cheney, Mitch McConnell. I mean, you can count them on the fingers of one hand at this point because they're all losing their power. And uh, it, this whole speech was just to call out MAGA and Donald Trump. This is a president who acts like a victim. He's president of the United States. And he's saying, those guys, they didn't accept the election. What the hell matter, does that matter? You're the president, and there was absolutely nothing wrong with that election, YouTube, honk honk. Um, I wish I could say more, but I can't. But... Um, uh, maybe on maybe on another channel where I say that all the time. That's part of the reason I had to redo this. Anyhow, you know, and he brought back January 6th like it happened a week ago. Dude, you're in trouble with that one. The, the probes are going to get uh, reprobed, let's say. And this time it's going to be a House of Republicans. That's assured. The Republicans will take the House. The only question is, are they going to take the Senate? And it's actually looking slightly better for the Republicans to do that, which is good. Warnock is starting to, the gap starting to close between Warnock and Herschel Walker. Uh, the gap is closing between Oz and Fetterman. Fetterman's looking weaker and weaker every day. In fact, I don't think Fetterman should be in office. He should not be elected. He looks very weak. Uh, not 
just about his stroke, but uh, he's got a lot of wacky beliefs in my view. And I, and I can't stand Oz, quite frankly, but I think you should vote for him. But anyhow, um, this was a speech to basically go after MAGA and look at the background, this intimidating background. Why would you light him this way? Why would you do something? And this is irritating to the nervous system, by the way. When you use red, it's irritating to the nervous system. So this is not a happy, um, subconsciously, this is not a happy speech, right? You don't come away with this, you know, even just watching this this long, it's kind of irritating. Um, like if they had used yellow or red, white, and blue, maybe, or, or some light colors, blue. Blue probably would have been a nice soothing color. Uh, then it would have been a different, different story. Instead, we've got this. He looks like a monster. He looks like he's giving a presidential address from hell. So, on top of the fact that he's kind of weak, he's kind of a weak monster, his wife had to bring him and take him from the podium. Let me put this on mute and click around. I, I think we have... Yeah, I mean, look at, look at him standing there. You ever see Trump stand there like that at the podium, like look off forlornly for his wife to come? So, the, the half ass salute, and then he's looking over, he's putting his hand out. Uh, it's like, yeah, he's, he looked weak. He looked weak coming up. And, and Jill, like, like, see, like, this lighting here would have been great, right? This lighting would have been fine, would have been bright. I mean, totally normal. But then, when he comes out, <laughs> dun, 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 and why is he with his wife? Why is he with his wife? It's because I think Jill had to guide him to the podium to make sure he got there. To make sure he didn't fall down. To make sure he knew where he was. So he didn't start giving the speech. You know, over here by the railing or wherever. I mean, he just looks weak. He just looks very weak. I mean, look at the way he puts up his hand. Jill has more energy. Jill puts up her hand like this. He puts his hand up like this. <laughs> I mean, what is that? She's smiling and waving. He looks confused. Now he, he guides her off, gives her a kiss, okay? And, yeah, he's, I assume, doped up to the eyeballs. Um, so again, I mean, I think this was an awful, awful speech. I mean, I can't stand Biden anyway. I'm totally biased, I'll admit. But my God, when you're talking about the soul of the nation, why, why did you give this speech? Why now? Why don't you go campaign for all these people that you want elected? He can't. Nobody wants to campaign with him. He's radioactive politically. This is the only thing he can do. He just bash, bash, bash MAGA, hoping that maybe he gets a few hundred votes out of this for the down ticket guys. The down ticket guys are screwed. They're all screwed. Everybody blames the Democrats for the current economy. You have no one to blame but you. You did this. You're spending money we don't have. Um, you refuse to drill. And nobody's buying your excuse. Because you attack the energy sector. And it's all connected to that. 100%. And then you're pouring money into Ukraine like it's going out of style. That's the problem. All Biden had to do. All he had to do. Now, the immigration's a factor, too, but it's less of a factor than the economy. All Biden had to do was come into office and not do anything because Trump's policies were working, right? So he comes in the office. Maybe he does some COVID stuff, but cosmetic stuff. Don't spend a lot of money. Just do cosmetic stuff. And then wait a few weeks. And then wait. Oh, gas drop 10 cents, come out and say, well, my economic policies 
<laughs> caused the gas to drop. Now, everybody would have come out and said, well, that, uh, that didn't really happen. But that would have been in conservative media anyway. The spin doctors on your side of the media, oh, they would have agreed, yes, see, Biden's economic plans are working. Even if he had passed nothing, even if he just passed a couple measures that meant nothing, he just needed to pass anything that didn't actually change anything, right? If he had let the Keystone, Keystone Pipeline alone, he would have been in great shape. The economy would still be roaring and he could just take credit for it all day long. He'd be cruising the re-election. Absolutely cruising. But because of this, because of his idiocy and the people who run his administration, because I don't think it's him, he's just too weak, they're getting hammered. And they, they don't know why, I guess, or they assume why, and now they're laying the groundwork. And this whole speech is laying the groundwork for, well, see, these people don't accept the results of an election but we're not going to accept the results of the midterm election because obviously there's been shenanigans. And that's about all I can say without getting in trouble from YouTube. So uh, I think this was very divisive, very divisive. Um, I, I It's going to be interesting to see what his poll numbers do after this. I can't imagine a lot of people watched this and felt, wow, I'm really inspired and hopeful that Joe Biden is president and of hell and uh, <laughs> is going to do a lot of great things. I, I really can't imagine. Anyhow, uh, that's my hot take. I, I, I'm sorry I screwed up the live stream. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow.